Uh, this isn't just for the little ones. This is for everybody. All the ch people younger than myself, you know, Jalen, the guys up, all you said, I've got your names. You know who I am, okay? I'm gonna say this, then I'm going to uh, try to explain it a little bit. Prophecy works like this. It comes from God through me to you. God gave me a song for you. I'm not gonna sing it. I'm gonna speak it. I'm gonna speak the verse, then I'm gonna explain it. It's only four verses, so be quick, okay? When I look at you young folks, pay attention to what I'm saying. This is for you. You may not understand this now, but I'm speaking to your spirit. Parents, explain this to them. This is what I see. There's a light shining forth. I can see it on the horizon. The sunrise, the sky gets light before you actually see the sun. You see the eastern sky getting light as it's coming up. When the sun rises, it lights up everything. You're that light. You're not the sun yet. You're not all the way up yet, but you're coming up, okay? This is what it is. It's the army of God preparing for war. That's where you're at now. Your uh, teachers here in this church, they're preparing you for what's to come. They're preparing you for war. This is one of your drill instructors. All these guys and girls that are Speaking into your life, they're getting you ready for war. You're coming conquering. This is the future. You're coming conquering victorious over the army of Satan. Nothing can stand. Nothing can stand before the army of God. When you go forth in the name of God, you know, this is about the helmet of salvation, the sword of the spirit, and the shield of faith, the breastplate truth and your feet shod with the gospel that means God's going to take you places that we haven't been to preach the gospel and all the power of the enemy is going to quake when you come into the room amen and again that's not just the littles that's your teens all of you okay yes. thank you amen thank you amen you may, you may be seated Thank you very much, parents. We are Pastor Dean with you. While everybody is taking their seats, you know, it truly, it is absolutely true. You train for everything that we do, right? No matter what it is you do, you train to do it. And so your kids, we don't know what God has them to do, but you got to train them to know, to hear what God is going to do for them and in them and through them. So... Train, train, train up a child. And when he gets old, he won't leave it, right? He will not depart from it. Well, we are glad everyone is here in church. Is it a good morning to be in church this morning? Huh? <laughs> Spring is around the corner. Amen? It is getting warmer out there. The snow is melting. I hope. <laughs> it, it, is, it is melting. So just as we get started, there are some new faces here, and we would like to really welcome you uh, to Calvary Assembly. And if you're new here, you know, we're going we're gonna to track you down, and we're going to give you this little card, because we want to get you some information more about us. We don't want to spam your, email, your uh, inbox or anything, but we would like you to know a little bit more about us, and um, just kind of get to know you a little bit. So that's what that is all about. So we do, uh, we are well, you know, we, we do welcome you, and we do want to get some information about you so we can get you our contact information. Um, a couple quick things this morning. Um, our tithes and offerings, there's three ways to give your tithes and offerings. You can mail it into the church. If you want to drop um, your tithes in the box in the back, there's there and there's envelopes back there for you to use also. Or you can use our, our app, Tithely, and that makes it really convenient. Um, there are two other announcements that are not going to be on the screen, the announcements, and those, these are those announcements. Today is a small groups fair, and so after church today, there's going to be some tables in the back, and our small groups are going to start in April, and there's lots of, there's a variety of different small groups, so please go back there, take a look at what there is, and really, before you sign up for anything, just give it a little bit of prayer. Ask God, where do I need to work in my life? Or what is it that, what is this, what opportunities do I need to jump on this morning or for this spring? So do look what we have there. And there's one more opportunity that everybody has this morning. So I, you have heard me say before that you got to reach kids before they hit 18, right? Yeah. The majority of kids who, the, the majority of people who work in ministry, 
found God, he got their life straight with God before their 18th birthday. Amen? So there's, a, there's lots of opportunities. There's kids camp coming. There's, uh, there's youth camp coming. But the very first thing that's coming is youth rally. Youth rally, teen rally is a part of the, um, the district's youth ministry where the kids go to Syracuse. They go there. It's like a retreat. It's a great, big, um, a great, great program. They have a conference, a convention. There's some breakout sessions. And our teens are going. We have a group of kids who are going. And it's been a while since we sent a group to, to um, the youth rally. And so it's really exciting. But here's the opportunity. Everybody want to get the opportunity? Yeah. You ready for the opportunity? Listen, this stuff is not free, all right? And so I'm really, we're looking for some people to help us scholarship some of these kids to get there because it does cost money. So if there, there is an opportunity, if you want to help them financially to get there, there is, there is opportunities. You know, if you want to give $10, that'd be great. It costs, the kids need about an additional 150 bucks each person to get to, to team camp or to, to uh, youth rally. That's about what it costs. It keeps convention, yes. I keep calling it the wrong thing. Youth convention, thank you. And youth, it's, if you're in youth group, if you're age for youth group, sixth grade and up, um, you are, are technically youth group age, and you are eligible to go there. And I'm probably getting Matt in a lot of trouble because he's going to have more kids than he can handle now, right? But if you, really, if you are in youth group age, youth convention and teen camp and kids camp is like the bomb, all right? Kids get called into ministry at these events, like immeasurable percentage-wise, right? It's just, it's just amazing what God does at these things. So I want to encourage you, if you can find a couple extra bucks to help scholarship some of these kids, Matt's going to figure out how he's going to all distrib distribute it properly and fairly and who needs it. And so go find him, stick a $100 bill in his hand because these kids need it. And you know what? It is not cash out of your pocket. It is an investment in the future, not just for a kid. It is an investment into the future of all those people that those kids are going to minister to. All right, so it's an exponential thing. It's not like I'm giving $100. It's like the exponent, like it's going to be multiplied that many more times. I can't, significant, I can't bring significant impact on what these things do, do, these events do. So, amen. I'm going to pray. We're going to go to our announcements. Kids, stand up. I'm going to pray for your kid, the kids. You're going to leave. We're going to do the announcements, and we're going to go on with our service because I've talked entirely too much. Father God, thank you for the opportunity to come to church and to worship you, Lord God. I pray right now for every single one of these kids that you'd open their minds and their ears and their hearts to hear what we're going to talk about today. I pray, Father God, that your Holy Spirit would move in this place, in the sanctuary today, that you'd open our minds and our hearts to hear your word. I pray, Lord, that your anointing fall on Pastor Siegfried this morning and that his words would pierce into our, deep into our souls so we could hear your word and what you have for us today. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Kids, you are dismissed out the back door, and our announcements are coming up. Bounce and deeper.
fair so I'm going to try to be like um, I don't know manage the time well so we can just enjoy the time um, after service so you don't have to leave in a rush all right um, just to give you a little bit ins and out as you know Pastor Ernesto um, was preached last Sunday here today he's preaching in a church in Albany so Pastor Mary and Stacy went with him to to interpret for him and tonight we're going to go to a church in, to, in Catskill to preach. So I try to make some connection with him. Why? You may not know. Um, I'm kind of like a coach to him. I don't say much. Uh, we talk at least sometimes two, three times a month. We call each other. We pray for each other. To me, it has been a divine appointment when I went on vacation and this whole thing um, unfolded, and I want you to know that you may not know, but Calvary Assembly of God is highly um, loved because of the mission trips we made, and also because of the connection and access he has to come to the U.S. He stays with me, but he cooks. I don't cook for him. No way. He cooks. We go shopping. He cooks. So he knows that drill. Um, but it's, it's amazing what God can do. And like we say, God works in mysterious ways. We are, are not perfect in what we do. Because none, no, no one is perfect when it comes to preaching the gospel. And we all make mistakes. I just want you to know, even when you, somebody is prophesying, there's hits and miss. Some things they say are off. And I had a friend that when he used to call me, he was asking me, he said, Siegfried, I want you to stand next to me. When you see that I'm going off, you tell me, so I will stop. So if we make an altar call and everybody comes up and they only pray for a few and give a prophecy because the person doesn't want to go in the flesh and start talking their own things because it happens. Just for you to know, so you won't feel offended. It's a very fine line that you have to, because it doesn't take long for you to become emotional and start saying your own things. I just want you to, to understand this. That's how God works. So that's how our relationship. So um, as you think about and pray for them, um, this year, I don't know, every year I have been, been to a mission trip. I have a bunch of um, clothes upstairs. I have a bunch of sneakers. But shipping has been very, very difficult. So uh, I, I held off. We have some chairs. Up the old chairs, they wanted me to ship them to them, so it's expensive. It's like $35 per chair, just for you to have an idea. But the chairs that we have are gold over there. We said they're old, they're faded. They can use them because they use plastic chairs. You know those plastic chairs that goes like, if you let a bit, you know, they go like, like Matt will have that problem with them. Hey, you open the door, I may as well walk through it. No offense. So that's... What's that message? You can unsponsor one of you. You never know. You never know. I may surprise you. You never know. Okay. You never know. You never know, Walter. God is generous. Amen. And more and more I'm learning, the more generous you are, the more he can entrust you with things. The more afraid you are to give to him, you have lack in your life. 
It took me a long, long time to learn this because I was born in a place of lack. And you have to hang on to whatsoever you have. But now I'm realizing it's by releasing, by letting go. That's how I get more. I had, a, I had an interesting, so today I'm going to go all over the place, okay? Is that, is that okay with you? Yes. I had an interesting um, experience. I went to a, a, a meeting in Florida. I think I told you this. And I was so humbled because they sent a, a, like a deacon to take care of us every day. So I, when I, call, I called up, he came and picked me up at the hotel. No, at the airport. He took me to the hotel. I was there for four days. Every single day at four, at, in the morning and, and the afternoon, in the evening, he would come and pick us up. And the thing that really, really struck me was he would open the door for me to get in. That was very, very humbling. I never had that ever happen to me. It was very, I'm telling you, I felt like saying ground wanting to open up and swallow me down. It was very, very humbling. But also I have learned it is because, um, first of all, gratitude, and that's how you treat your guests. Because when they brought us up later, they said that's how we treat our guests. We take care of our guests. We treat them well. Because when you go, like an example, in the military, I guess, I don't know which, which title they have, so you don't have to correct me. Whether it's a coronel, major, whatever it is, they always have an attendant, somebody that takes care of them. Okay? Why not when it comes to the kingdom of God? We have to raise our, our I'm not going to say to you, be um, idolized, but there must be a certain measure of gratitude for what God has done for us. Church, I can never repay God I can never repay you for what you're doing for me. Neither you can ever repay me for what I'm doing for you. I'm a product of prayer, prayed many, many years ago, but I don't even know by who. So I'm carrying behind me prayers prayed in the past. You are carrying behind you. Somebody prayed for you. You are not here by accident. You're here because when God called you, I'm going to throw a word for you today just to, to make you spin your brain. Do you know that God seduces us? Now, seduction, you immediately think about something negative. Seduction is a negative. It all depends how you interpret it. Immediately we think about it in the sexual context. No, seduction is when God is calling you to come to him because he loves you and he wants to fill you with his love. And God knows, and he is empty. And God knows what you're craving for. And we crave for love. We crave to belong. But then the world offers us so many, many highways and byways. And those are easy, and we go towards the highways until when we realize they're empty. And God loves us. It's true. We went through so many things in life. But still, God loves you. And still, His graces are new every single day. Every single day that you wake up, you should imagine God saying to you, Come. I, I'm the answer. I can help you. I will sustain you. I will protect you. You may not understand everything that I'm doing right now, but you need to trust me. Every single day. Every single day, God wants relationship with you, fellowship with you. He wants to base you in his love. Why? Because in you and I, there, there is something, the image of God. Only you and I can pray and experience presence. Only you and I can pray and experience 
power. Only you and I can say, God, forgive me. And our lives are being changed. We become a new creation. A new creation isn't something physical. It's something spiritual. That we can talk to Him. Our challenges. I'm, I'm going to be a little poetic. Many of us haven't learned how to dance with God. Hmm? To relax on Him. To wait on Him. Because we're being taught here in America, it's from point A to point B. We want to gather. Some people go on vacation and they're already thinking what's going to happen when they come home. No. Enjoy the trip. Enjoy the journey. God has a way to appear in the darkest moments in life. When you think it's all over. It's true the devil has power. But it cannot be compared to the power of God. Because it says when we were dead in our trespasses. Jesus died for our sins. And then he takes the, the weak and makes us strong. He takes the unlovable and make him love and show love through them. And God doesn't go to Hollywood. Have you ever been to Hollywood? Hollywood is a sad place. If you have, if you have been to Hollywood, it's a very sad place. There's nothing there. Nothing. Only the stars on the, on the street there's a bunch of fakers. There's nothing in Hollywood. Trust me. Go one day you will see. Because I've been there. I, I, I wanted to see what it would look like, but there's nothing there. But in us, there's something. In you, there's something. In you, there is a seed planted by God. Do you know that in a seed, there is enough power for it to grow and become a tree? Have you ever seen a seed growing in between a black top? Have you ever seen a seed growing on, the, on top of a vehicle? Because when a seed is ready to grow, they are unstoppable. And when you allow God to work in your heart, there is no demon, there is no devil, there is no situation that can stop you. But you have to hone in that power, the Holy Spirit in your life. Ian, we had a little conversation the other day. You feel defeated sometimes because you don't get out of the way. For God to do the work. When you get out of the way, then God will work. It's not that the power isn't available, but you need to obey and be strong and stop convincing yourself and be who you're not because God has a design for you. And why can I say this to you? I'm not talking about because I read in the Bible. I'm talking because of the place where I came from. I came out of the place of lack. Nothing. No hope. My mom was a woman of faith. Of prayer. She always used to pray. I think that's where I got it from. I don't know. Do you know what's hard to believe when you don't have anything in your house to eat? To believe that God will provide? 
when your sneakers has a hole in it and you cannot go to school and you have to believe that God will provide. When you go to school, you are the one that have to say all the derogatory things about. People are mean. My dad used to have a certain lifestyle. And today, even when I go back home, I will meet people that will call me by that lifestyle specifically. Not because they want to lift me up, because they see I've changed, but they want to remind, remind me. So they have to press the button to push you down. But when you look at them, they haven't made any progress in life. So they're envious. And because I have this experience, I believe the same thing for you. And that's why I serve. I serve because God is showing me, Siegfried, no matter what you see in front of you, there is hope. It may take a long time. It may take a long time. Mom, dad, you may cry for many, many years. God is faithful. God is faithful. Sometimes he does weird things to you, but he's faithful. I don't know if he's, well, he's different then. It's not weird, he's different. I know I talk about my son many, often many times. I know that. It is because of my experience. As a single dad, I cried a lot. I prayed. But no one knew. People used to tell me, oh, we can help you. If you need help, we will help you. But with what? The only thing they couldn't help you was with what? The thing that that single parent needs the most. What is it? What is it? Babysitter. So I used to take my son with me to church. He used to play with car, little cars, and but I went to church as I could. Because God was the only one that was going to sustain me. And he did. And God is faithful. Sometimes I say I wish my life was perfect. I wish I had you know, all, the right, the, the, all the right measurements in life. But it's through brokenness and challenges God works. We see how the devil challenged Job. Job remained faithful to God. And God honored him. I wish I can explain to you why God allowed everything allowed. I don't know. But his love is so amazing that oftentimes I don't need to know. I'm not going to preach my message. I'm going to just, just highlight something quickly for you today. Do you know Calvary, the place where Jesus died? Calvary, we talk about. The name Calvary really is not in the Bible. It's called the place of, um, skull of Golgotha. It, it's in Latin. They, they translate it to Calvary. So as much as we say Calvary, it's not in the Bible. But Calvary is a place of two things. Pain, death, and new beginning. Calvary is a place of transition. It's not a place to stay. And that's why we don't have Jesus on the cross. 
That's why the cross is empty. It's a sign to you. But, but way beyond that, after Calvary, Jesus gave the disciples a promise. I will, I will send the Holy Spirit to guide you, to lead you. And the day of Pentecost, a new beginning started. And God started a church. And God is a giver, a giver, a giver. And he gave gifts, gifts, gifts to people, to the church. Leadership, giving, prophecy, teaching. He gave gifts. He gave them. He gave gifts. He's a giver. He gave gifts. What do you think? He gave his gifts. Many of you have been here many, many years. And we have seen how a lot of things are changed, changing. When Jesus died on Calvary, because he was moving forward. Calvary is a place of transitioning. And it's a place of hope. I hope you get what I'm saying to you. It isn't a place of death. I know a lot has happened since the last couple of... of um, Years. But we can dream again. Because God has given us gifts. I, I love the past, but I cannot go to the past. I love the future, but I cannot see the future fully. But one thing I know, we can dream again. We can dream again because the Holy Spirit is with us. And God has given us gifts. You have a gift. You have been gifted. You have to figure out what it is. And move in it. As long as you are disinterested, we'll be poor, we'll be lacking, and you'll be wondering how come, how come no one is doing this or that. Some people are very interesting. They, they know how to do something better than you. But they sit and they watch and they criticize you. That is a love. It's intimidating to rise up in your gift. But you have to remember God has gifted to you, given it to you. So my prayer is this. In the days to come. I'm praying to God for people that are willing um, will make themselves available to dream again. To dream of what we can be and what we can do. I'm very, um, I'm, um, I feel very proud when they ask me, does your church own a mortgage? I said, no, we don't, owe, we don't owe anybody anything. How big is your building? I tell them it's what, 400? I think it's four something, four. Yes. I have all these rooms. They ask you, what do you do with them? I cannot do it alone. I'm not going to do it alone. I need dreamers. I need dreamers. I'm not looking for perfect people. I'm looking for people that are washing the blood. That believe in the gift that God has given them. Are willing to dream with me. I came a long way, you know. And my prayer has been to God, I want to finish well. <laughs> Yesterday, I went to my first Medicare seminar. 
<laughs> How many of you have been to one of them? Come on, raise your hands. Come on. Yes. And the lady says to me, when are you aging in? I said, that's a nice way to put it. Huh? When are you aging in? So I'm aging in in October. But I'm still dreaming. I believe I'm still young at heart. And there's hope. Someone told me I'm going to see my grandkids grow up and have kids. That's what they told me. That's going to be interesting, by the way. <laughs> so I hope. So I hope as I share with you today that you will take your time to pray. And you're willing to dream again with me. There's a lot of need out in our community. But I hope you're willing to give out of your abundance to dream again. Because God is good. This past year, we did a Christmas offering. We raised $10,000. We can do better than that. But what I want to see is your heart, your joy, your willingness to dream with me and to dream together. One of my greatest experiences to watch Thanksgiving dinner, youth events, when you guys come together, even when we do a Christmas, uh, 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 <laughs> uh, 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 Christmas party for, for the region, my greatest joy is to watch you guys work together. That's my joy. So I have hope that we can dream again. But I'm going to remind you, I cannot dream alone. So as God touches your heart, it's easy to be a loner, you know. It's very easy to be a loner. But God has called us to be one body. And Jesus Christ, because each one, one by one, and add us together. And I know the frictions, like, you know, like with Matt. I know we have our <laughs> things goes on. But even when dreaming, you have to learn how to be humble and forgive. Because it's not about you. It's about Jesus. So I'm going to do this. I know you are busy. I know we have a lot going on with small groups. I'm going to just try something. This Wednesday at 7, I want to just sit down and have a talk. You're welcome to come. It's open to everyone. We're going to see what's going to happen after that. We're going to just dream again. We'll pray, share, but we're going to dream. So I love you. I'm grateful to God that he has uh, given me a chance to serve you. I'm very humbled for the opportunity because I have a long way to go. And how, he, how, how come he has entrusted me with such a responsibility doesn't make sense to me. And I wrestle with that. I wrestle with it. So we're going to pray to be dismissed today. And I'll, I'll preach my sermon next Sunday. So I have a week to just rest a little bit. And think about the gifts. Think about the gift that God has given you. And let him be selfish. And ask God to show you how you can help us to seek free. Carry on the mission. But remember, Calvary is a place of transitioning. We don't stay stuck at Calvary. We're going to move forward in the name of Jesus. Would you stand with me? We're going to pray. And there is a, today's a small groups fair. There are some tables in the back. Um, can someone tell the, they have to tell the class?
I'm tell the class we're almost done so the teachers can come up here. Um, so you can sign up, join a small group, experience what it's like to be in a small group and have some fun. Um, greet somebody as you're leaving, ask them for their name. You can ask for 20 times because I do. Um, do that kind of stuff. Be open. Let's love one another. And sometimes some of you that say up, upstairs, you should come and say hi to us downstairs and don't just, just leave because we are a body. I know I make you feel uncomfortable, but you have to forgive me because I'm your pastor. Is it true, Joe? Yeah, that's my, that's my, um, what is it? Um, no. Prerogative. IVP, what do you call it? Um, Privilege. Privilege. But there's a word, though. VIP, VIP status. That's my <laughs> VIP status. All right? Huh? Very important pastor. Oh, wow. I was going to say person. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we bless you. We praise you. God, we thank you for this day and for your goodness. Help us in seeking you and serving you. And help us to be givers like you. Bless our lives today, Father God. We thank you for all these things. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.